Hello, I'm Lord Davidson, servant and apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, ministering locally to the body of Christ in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, sent by God to your house to declare to you the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. First Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, tell us what the gospel is. How that Jesus died by our sins, he was buried, he rose again the third day, according to the scripture. Amen. Spread the Lord is upon me, as he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me, heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captives, recover of sight to the blind, and set at liberty them that are bruised. The word is not the word is neither even in your heart and in your mouth. Is a word of faith which I preach. You'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. When the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Thank God. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God and the salvation, everyone that believes it, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by his faith. I want to welcome everyone uh, throughout the world on live stream, Roku and other devices. Good morning from Plano, Texas. On the platform with me, Kathy Davidson. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. Are you ready? I'm ready. What are we going to do? We're going to do whatever you suggest. Hallelujah. Well, 2000, the hardest year of my ministry. I went on secular television in May the 1st, five days a week, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Springfield, Missouri, Dallas, Texas, and others, five days, the Book of Romans, three very religious communities. Tulsa, Springfield, Assemblies of God. Tulsa, of course, Oral, Roberts, and Kennedy. And then Dallas, the Baptist, and every other kind of religion. They could not stand me. They hated what I spoke. And for the Next 15 years, it was tough. 2000 to even today, in three and four, I flew along with others and prayed in the 48 states of the mainland. That was a real confrontation of the powers and principalities. I've never known any man or woman that God directed to do that. Not one. Did that in just less than one year. That was incredible. Blew by charter. Took six with me on almost all of them. One, I just took one person. Two, I took seven. Seattle and Portland. It was a great experience, but it was a great time of affliction. I was in such warfare that I could cast out devils. I saw people healed, but I was fighting for my life. 1 John 5, 4, this is a victory that overcometh the world, even your faith. That's what I was doing. 
Yesterday was the first day Kathy D was present by herself, took my pulpit in plain water blood. Her message was extremely unusual to me, but I knew her. And I just had to watch the wages of sin is death. She didn't just say it once. The Lord her said it a dozen times or so and taught it, preached it. She's a gospel evangelist. The only gospel preaching evangelist I know of. Thank God. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Others preach the gospel. She's a true evangelist. I thank God for everyone preaching the gospel. She related it to the Isaiah 53, 2 and 3. But I think Ezekiel 5, right? Ezekiel 5, yes. Right. It was a hard hitter. And last night, Kathy, my and I were up, and I didn't really know what we were to do. I kind of played around with her for a few minutes which God will let me do. That's my soul. That's my heart. Then Kathy said, Kathy, I want to sing a song. I said, well, go ahead. She did, and after that, God was ready. He was ready, and he started after rebellion and the, the sin of rebellion and the sin of witchcraft. The spirit of God in me was angry at the sin of witchcraft and rebellion. It was a lovely time for me. The anointing was strong. The power was strong. Things were moving. And I even asked KD to come get me and bring me down on the floor. Right. Amen. Well, this morning it's clear to me that on Sunday morning, Sunday evening, and Wednesday evening, our services will be just like they were last night. So I've asked Kathy if she'd read with Matthew 10. Sure will. Let's go. And you want uh, from verse 5 about the, the 12? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, verse 5. These 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans any you not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, Freely you have received, freely give. Amen. Now, uh, that's the, the message I have. That's my gospel. That's the way God has sent me since 1974, actually. And it's been a great blessing what God has led me to do. In 09, things changed. Terry Bay went to heaven suddenly. People were leaving this ministry everywhere you looked. Eight and nine. It was absurd. Rejecting the gospel. But God had a plan. He had three women to sit up here with me to minister with me. And I want KD 
to read. In Matthew 10, where Jesus said, he didn't come to bring peace, but a sword. I'm going to read from verse 34, Matthew 10. Right. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. And that's exactly what happened to me uh, as far, far back as 1984. It was amazing what came into my house. Patty, who's now in heaven, went there in 2000, what, two, three. Amen. Amazing what took place. She yielded to a rebellious spirit. Read about it on my website. But then, a sword came into Terry Brown's house, into Kathy Dean's house. For sure. Yeah. Kathy Byers, all three of them. Changes were made. Very drastic changes. May some are not completely evident to you, but they are me. So now, these three girls will be ministered with me right down here on the floor. Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. Casting out devils, healing the sick. Amen. Raise the dead, cleanse the lepers. All three of them have faith to do this. Kathy D, Kathy By, and Terry Brown. They all have faith to do this. They've stood strong with opposition from their families. Much opposition from mothers, fathers, Husbands, amazing what took place. That's God. I preach this from day one. It's the truth. So now they will be ministering with me, and we will see many devils cast out. Amen. Many. You know, it says in Mark 16, preach the gospel. First thing that happens, you believe you'll cast out devils. Speak a new tongue. Take up any, take up serpents. That won't hurt you. Drink any deadly thing. Won't hurt harm you. Lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. Did you know that's the last of the five? Amen. That's remarkable, isn't it? Yeah. First, it's cast out devils. That's the way my ministry began back in the 1970s. How are we doing? We're doing well. Good. What do you want to say? Well, I want to read a verse in Luke. Good. Because some, you know, I've gotten a lot of uh, voices speaking to me about what God did in my family. Right. And I want to read Luke 12, 52. Uh, actually, I'm going to read verse... 51, suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth, I tell you nay, but rather division. This is Jesus speaking. For from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided, three against two and two against three. The father shall be divided against the son, the son against the father, the mother against the daughter, and the mother, the daughter against the mother, the mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. But where it says five in one house divided, three against two, two against three. That happened in my house. Right. That actually happened in Kathy Byers right. and Terry Brown. It's happened. It's amazing what has gone on in all three of your lives. Thank God. 
you and I were talking this morning and, and we were reminded when in 2009 when God was sending me to Plano and I finally shared with you what um, the Spirit of God said to me, right. an angel or Jesus standing next to me said, do you want this? And I was reading about Smith Wigglesworth, the miracles that, that uh, God did through him, the casting out devils, the laying on, on of hands. And I told you, I finally told you about it, got brave enough, and you said, you said, yes, Kathy, that will happen. Oh. He said, and that is all well and good, but the first thing you're going to learn to do is to walk with me. Amen. Well, our boldness met, didn't it? Right. Didn't it? Yours had mine. You know, there was something else that God had me say to you early. That's Hosea 6. That's right. You want to read that? Yes, I will. In fact, he spoke it to both of us at the same time. Right. When we were, we were not in the same place. Hosea 6, verse 1. Come and let us return unto the Lord, for he has torn and he will heal us. He has smitten and he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us, and the third day he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know, if we follow on to know the Lord. His going forth is prepared as the morning. He shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. That's what's happened to this ministry. Amen. It took God 15 years working through me to get us where we're at. Amen. 2000 was a it was a, an amazing thing that came down on me. Amen. Just amazing. And it now just beginning to let up. It increased for 15 years. But thank God that we have prevailed. We've done what God wanted us to do. But notice he said, Beginning what? If you'll return? No, return, right? Yeah, it says, come and let us return unto the Lord. That's the message to the world. So I'm saved. You're not saved. You may be going to heaven, but saved is safety, soundness, delivered from every Henry Edwards, victorious in everything, sitting on top of it. That's salvation. Amen. Thank God. So the church, God's people, come, return unto the Lord. Right? Right. Read that to me again. Okay. Come and let us return unto the Lord. For he has torn, and he will heal us. He has smitten, and he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us, and the third day he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know, if we follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning, he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. That's what's happened to me. Uh saw those verses years ago that God brought me back to him. Well, I was born again when I was just short of six. But God brought me back and I could see to see the former and latter rain in its fullness I will have to follow after the Lord. And that's what I've done. Amen. Are you ready to quit? Just about. Uh, I, you know. Well, you don't have yeah, to. Yeah, yesterday, and, and I'll, I'll share this. Um, I was reluctant with the message that God gave me. I know I can hear God. Right. And, and when God gave me that message, I thought, well, Jesus, it's my first time. And, and I'm coming out with a hammer. But right. it was God. But, you know, I found out later through the grapevine that there were some people that spent their afternoon repenting right, and getting themselves straight with God. You know what, what that means? The anointing was on your message and you, you delivered it by the Spirit of God. Amen. I told you when you were speaking 
are three men choking. Right. One here, one there, and one there. And I thought, hmm, this message is working in three men's hearts. Amen. Amen. So what do we do next? Quit? Well, we've got nine minutes left. Well, what else do you want to talk about? I don't. Thank God. Blessed be the name. I Thank give you, thanks, Jesus. Praise God in bed. Thank God in bed. Thank God in bed. Thank God in bed. Thank God in Oh, I do. You know what this is going to bring into my life? My vision coming back. Amen. My vision. Galatians 4 and 6 tell what happened of my vision. People troubled me. They troubled me and brought my sight down to this level. Oh, that was not easy. Six years this has been going on. Been very tough. Actually, it started in seven and eight, maybe even six, I'm not sure. When I lost sight in my right eye, I could not see anything. And one day, I noticed I could see color. And then I could see my fingers doing this. I knew I wasn't blind. Amen. Amen. But then it went over here. Same thing. And it's all from the witchcrafts, the sins of God's people that came against me. Their sins were laid upon me. Thank God. It happened to Jesus. It happened to Paul. Amen. But Paul says in that sixth chapter, book of Galatians, are you closer? I'm in the Sixth chapter right now. Read, would you read what Paul said? All right, I've got to find it. Um, it's about verse 13, 14, 19. Yeah. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Thank God. Henceforth. Thank God. Amen. Does anybody see well, it? Well, from 17 it says, From henceforth let no man trouble me. For I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Oh. Well, then he said. Then he said, right, that was what I was looking for earlier. He wrote this letter. Right. It's toward the end. I know. Sorry. Anyway. Uh, it's verse 11. You see how large a letter I have written unto you sorry. with my own hand. Right. Go ahead and read that. Okay, okay. verse 11. You, you see how large a letter I have written unto you with my own hand. As many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. And then the verse 17, from henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Right, that's what's happened to me. Troubled by men and women. Amen. But those days are coming to an end. Amen. And this anointing and this meetings on Sunday morning and evening and Wednesday night, <laughs> I'm overcoming all your rebellions and witchcrafts that were laid against me and my vision will return. Amen. You through? Yes. The gospel was preached at the beginning of this se session. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3 and 4, how that Jesus died for our sins according to Scripture. He was buried. He rose again the third day according to Scripture. If you heard that, you believe that in your heart, you're born again. You're saved. You're one with the Lord, one in the Spirit with Jesus. If you believe that in your heart, I want to hear from you. Email me, gospel at noahdavidson.com. God bless you. Oh.
I'd like you to join me and the ministers of music from Water of Life Church here in Plano as we minister the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is the power of God. On February 15, 1913, in New Orleans, a baby boy was born to George and Betty Sumrall. They named him Lester. Betty Sumrall was a woman of faith. And as her son quoted, he said, My mother had decided even before I was born that I was going to be a preacher. She had prayed for me fervently while I was in her womb. Back when I couldn't do anything about it, except maybe kick a little. I was born at home, child number six, and I was completely unplanned. Now his mother was a woman of faith. 
And she would invite the evangelists to come stay in their home when they were having meetings at their church. That meant a house full of people, and it also meant extra mouths to feed. Lester decided he didn't like evangelists, and he was never going to be one. Well, Lester's mother was a real prayer warrior, and Lester knew it. Miracles were real in his house. She, uh, at one time, his mother was diagnosed with breast cancer. She said she called together some women who knew that she knew could pray. And they started to pray on a regular basis, and they started praying fervently for her. Well, one night, while they were doing this, Jesus came into her bedroom at night, touched her, and she was instantly healed. She never had cancer again. And then Lester's grandfather had a major stroke, and he became paralyzed, couldn't move his arms or his legs, and he was confined to a wheelchair. Well, Betty got her group of women together again, and they began praying fervently for him. The first thing they did was they got him born again, and then the power of God hit him. And one night, God laid him, uh, the power of God hit him. He got up out of the wheelchair, and he could move his arms and legs, and he spent 15 more years living by himself, totally healed. This is the house that Lester grew up in. But Lester just got in with the wrong crowd. And he dropped out of school at the age of 16. Well then, not long after, Lester started having a cough. And then he coughed up blood. Tuberculosis. Back in that time, tuberculosis was a death sentence. And Lester began a slow process of dying. He spent six months in his bed, totally bedridden. In fact, it got so bad one night that uh, the doctor took the family out of the room and started filling out his death certificate. But all the while, Betty and her group of women, her group of women that knew how to pray, were praying fervently for him. That night, when they thought he was dying, Lester had a vision. And in that vision, he was lying in his bed, and on one side was a large Bible, about the size of a wall, open, floating in the, in the air. And on the other side of his bed was a coffin, just his size, floating beside him. And God gave him, uh, gave him a, a question. He said, you can die here tonight or you can preach the gospel. Your choice. Good choice. Lester chose to preach the gospel. Instead of filling out the rest of that birth certificate that night, Lester Summerall woke up the next morning totally healed. Totally healed. Went and ate food for the first time in six months. Uh, First time in months. Lester Three weeks later, of dying of tuberculosis, packed his bags, took off, and started on the evangelistic trail, the evangelist that he was never going to be. You know, Lester went on and preached that gospel all over the world. He began churches. He started a radio and TV station. And he also started the World Harvest International Radio shortwave all over the world. You know, I'm part of that radio station. Um, My program is on Angel 2, and it broadcasts over Israel, North Africa, the Middle East, Southern Europe, five days a week on shortwave, all because God had a mother, a mother that believed, and God, what would you say, pushed Lester into obeying him. Thank God for that. I have a perfect song here. I have returned. Sung here by Terry Brown. Let God minister to you while this song plays. I have returned to the God 
to the same simple faith as a child I once knew like the prodigal son I've longed for my loved ones for the comforts of home and the God I outgrew unfailing faith for the child of her heart she said bring them up in the way that you want them thank God when they're grown they'll never depart I have returned to the God like man a child could know I just heard a shout from the angels in glory praising the Lord a child has come I'd like to invite anyone that's in the Dallas area to come and join me here at Water of Life Church, 10 a.m. Sunday mornings at uh, the corner of 18th and Avenue P in Plano. 
where I will be preaching the gospel. I am preaching the gospel. And where the music ministers are here uh, ministering with me. And we are praying for people. We are um, healing the sick and casting out devils. Come and join us. If you can't be with us, you can watch me on live stream at my website, www.kathiedavidsonwol, as in water of life, dot com. Okay, let's pray. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. I thank you. Father, I thank you. Let the power of my Lord be great. Let the power of my Lord be great. Let the power of my Lord be great and grant us repentance. Open our eyes that we can see. Open our hearts like you did for Lydia, that we can attend under the things which are spoken. Turn us from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God. And I ask this in Jesus' name, amen. We have been going over the actual events of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And why do we do that? Let's turn to Romans 1, 16. This is why we do it. This is Paul speaking. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I'm not afraid to use it. I'm not afraid to trust in it. It says, for it is, it is the power of God. It doesn't say it is like the power of God. And it doesn't say it's almost as if for the power of God. No, it said it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Do you want the power of God? Do you want to God to work those works in your own life? Well, you're going to find it and you're going to get it through the gospel. Amen. Now, we have been talking about the resurrection of Jesus. And I want to ask you a question. We've all, uh, if, if you've ever grown up in church, every Easter, we got up early for the sunrise service. And we um, went out into the fields and we held that little was that a little potted plant with the seed that we were going to grow because that's what Jesus did. He rose, out, rose from the dead. And we sang, up from the grave he rose every year. But I want to ask you a question. What came out of that grave? Have you ever considered what came out of that grave? Was it a spirit? Was it an angel? What was it? Well, we're going to look at that today, and we're going to start in John 20. We're going to go over some scriptures of what exactly came out of that grave. And I'm going to begin here, John 20, verse 13. And this is, this is uh, Mary Magdalene. She's in the garden, and they, she just found out that the body of Jesus isn't there. It's not there. And she sees two angels. And the angels ask her, they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? And she answered back, She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. The body's gone. And when she had said thus, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing. Now look at this. And she knew not it was Jesus. She saw him standing there, but she didn't know it was Jesus. Let's take a look at the next verse. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back. She saw Jesus standing and knew not it was Jesus. And Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? And look at the next sentence. She, supposing him to be the gardener. The gardener. Okay. I've seen gardeners. They don't shine. They don't twinkle. They don't sparkle. And they're not six inches off the ground. She thought he was an ordinary gardener. Do you see what I'm saying? He didn't twinkle. He wasn't sparkling. He wasn't floating in midair. She thought he was a gardener. Let's continue. 
She's supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him thence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said unto her, he talked to her out of his mouth. All right? Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, Master. She now recognizes it's Jesus. And look what Jesus says to her. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not. Touch me not. You know what? She could have touched him. She could have touched him. Well, that meant he wasn't transparent. She couldn't see through him. He said, don't touch me. And why did he say that? For I am not yet ascended to my father. And I love this next part. This is Jesus. This is our Savior speaking. This is the man that just came out of the grave that just came from the dead, that just came up from hell, that is alive and back in his body, he said, and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father. Amen. He said, and to my God and your God. That's what he told Mary. Now, let's continue over. Turn the page. We're going to go to verse 24. This is Th uh, Thomas. We all know doubting Thomas. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciple therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Oh, yeah, I hear you. Oh, yeah, that doubting Thomas, that wicked man. Shall we get into us? Not today. All right. But he said, um, the thrust my hand to his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again, his disciples were within, Thomas with them. And then came Jesus, the doors being shut, stood in the midst and said, peace be unto you. And look at what Jesus said to Thomas. And you don't think Jesus can hear what you say or hear what you think? Jesus turned to Thomas. He said, reach hither thy finger and behold my hands. Reach hither my hand and thy hand and thrust it into my side. Do you know what? He was telling Thomas, you can reach in and touch my hands. You can take your hand and thrust it into my side. Why can you? Because that was a man standing there. That was a man standing there. And be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said, my Lord and my God. I love this next part. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. You know, that's us. That is us. Now, one last one, Luke 24. And I'm going to read from verse 33. And uh, let's see, Luke 24. Oops. Yeah, verse 33. And they rose up the same hour, and these are the disciples, and it says also the two from Emmaus. Jesus walked with the two from, Emin, uh, from Emmaus and spoke to them about the gospel, and he uh, ate bread with them, and then he disappeared. And it said, verse 33, And they rose up the same hour, returned to Jerusalem, and found the eleven gathered together, and them that were with him, saying, The Lord has risen again and has appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way and how he was known to them in the breaking of bread. Now look at this next part. And as they thus spoke, this is verse 36, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said, saith unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrightened and supposed that they had seen a spirit. They thought, that they were looking at a spirit. They were afraid. But look at what Jesus answered them. He said, Why are you troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Handle me. Handle me. He said, And see for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me have. Jesus had flesh and bones. And he 
just told him there he did. He said, handle me. You know you can touch him? Do you know you can touch Jesus? Because he's a man. He's got flesh and bones, just like you and I do. The only thing he doesn't have is blood. That he shed for us. But he's got flesh and he's got bones. That was a man that came out of the grave. That was a man standing there with the disciples. Oh, you say, but how did he disappear and appear again? Uh, folks, that's God. That's all I can say. That is the Spirit of God. But he had flesh and bones. Oh, yeah, God just told me. Don't forget Philip disappeared, showed up uh, down on the road to Gaza. Thank you, Jesus. God will do that to you, too, if you believe. Now, we've got flesh and bones. We've got a man. We've got a man that came out of the grave. Why is that so important? Why is that important that Jesus was a man that came out of the grave? Well, let's remember. When Jesus died on the cross, he had all our sin in him, on him. He had every disease and every pain that you and I could possibly have on him and in him. What did God do with that body of a man that had every disease and every sickness on it and every sin on it? What did he do with it? When he raised it from the dead, he healed it. It is important that you understand that Jesus came out of the grave alive, not a spirit, not an angel. He came out a man the same as he went in, the same as he went into the grave. Only now that body has no sin, no sickness, no disease, and no death. No death. That is the difference between you and I and Jesus. That body came out of the grave, no sin, no sickness and disease, no spirit on him, and no death. Why is that important to you and I? There is no possible way that you and I cannot be healed if we believe. He's already been, God already healed a body once. He will do it again and again and again and again because he did it with Jesus. That is the power of the gospel. Every sickness and disease is healed if you believe. If you hang on, like Paul said, if you're not afraid to trust in it, Every sickness, every disease, every sin forgiven, every disease healed, poverty destroyed, if we believe. That's one reason we have to understand Jesus came out of the grave the same way he went in, only this time he has no death and no sickness and no disease, a perfect body. And there's one other reason too. If you'll turn with me to Philippians 3 real quick. Verse 21, because the Father is going to do the same thing with us. The same thing with us that he did with Jesus. The body went in, in sickness and disease and sin and poverty. The body came out of the grave without death, without sickness, without disease, without sin and without death. And he's going to do the same thing, the same thing to you and I. Verse 21, Who shall change? This is the Father. Our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto Jesus' glorified body, glorious body, unto his glorious body, according to the working, whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. You and I are going to have the same glorious body that Jesus has. And we are going to be without spot and wrinkle, just like he promised. Why? Because he came out of that grave, a man, alive, no death in him. I have the perfect song here, Water of Life Boys, Only the Redeemed. As I look around me in these days where living is, I question how much longer will it be till the Father reaches over, touches. 
that's been raised from the dead. Till next time, God bless. We invite you to visit Water of Life Church at 1621 18th Street in Plano, Texas. Or for further information, call area code 972-578-8082. That's 972-578-8082. Or write Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. That's Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. This program was paid for by Water of Life Church.